Governor Ron DeSantis is the only other Republican currently polling in double digits in 2024 Republican primary polls, and yet he's had a significant fall from grace to where his polling was at at the end of 2022, just after the midterm disaster for Republicans and the beginning of 2023. Really since February of 2023, there's been a significant decline in Republican support for Ron DeSantis. It's sort of stabilized now, of course, as of May 2023. That was when he decided to launch his campaign. And it seems since the launch, he's been able to stabilize his support in the low 20s. But obviously, this is insufficient in actually winning the Republican primary. And of course, there's still a considerable amount of time until the Republican nomination uh, in the summer of 2024. But as of right now, it looks very bleak for the DeSantis campaign, given the fact that none of their strategies have really seemed to work to actually usurp Donald Trump's position as the front runner. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the polls that we have, uh, both nationally and a couple of the statewide polls in earlier states to kind of gauge where Ron DeSantis is as compared to Donald Trump. And of course, some reasons as to why Ron DeSantis has failed to gain any significant traction. And that might actually have a separate video uh, in the next week or so where we dive more into specific examples. But of course, we're going to get into all of that in just a second. But first, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and liking this video if you enjoy. So Ron DeSantis was riding high after the midterms in 2022. Of course, he won re-election against Charlie Crist, the former then Republican governor of Florida, of course, now running as a Democrat by nearly 20 percentage points. And this was at the same time when a lot of Trump's endorsed candidates, in fact, most of Trump's endorsed candidates in critical swing states lost their elections, in some cases by pretty wide margins. Non-Trump Republicans, Ron DeSantis, Brian Kemp, Mike DeWine, uh, all won re-election victories or election victories by pretty substantial margins. Even some down-ballot candidates in Georgia who were, you know, these MAGA Trump-aligned candidates that were sort of uh, further down the ballot actually were pulled up by these strong uh, Republicans. Now, since the midterms and, you know, really since uh, February of 2023, Ron DeSantis has failed to really withstand any of the attacks against Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump has been relentless in his attacks against Ron DeSantis. He started attacking DeSantis before the midterms, but then really ramped it up as it became clear he was going to run for president. And really, the only thing I could think of that stopped this downward spiral was, of course, DeSantis actually deciding to finally jump into the race in May and announce his candidacy. It could be argued that if DeSantis had announced in February or even March, uh, he'd be in a much stronger position for the Republican nomination since he would have a bit more time to get his message out there and repel some of these attacks. But I think one of DeSantis' biggest weaknesses in this primary is not illustrating the fact that Donald Trump cannot beat Joe Biden in 2024. I mean, that's the message he has to hit home time and time again. Now, in the Democratic Party, for instance, electability is taken much more seriously than in the Republican Party. Now, this is partly due to the fact that many Republicans, most Republicans don't believe that the 2020 election was legitimate. And thus, the electability argument goes out the window since most of the Republican base at this point in time will just say that the Democrats are going to cheat either way. Donald Trump was robbed in 2020 and should be the Republican nominee. So obviously, that argument's not going to work. So DeSantis has tried to pin himself as the more authentic conservative to Donald Trump and really in these attempts has just alienated more of the moderate Republicans uh, that were inclined to support him earlier on since, you know, he was the anti-lockdown governor. Uh, he really didn't focus too much on uh, the really divisive social issues. But now I think the campaign has gotten a little bit desperate and has started to pivot to those issues because it's really the only area where they can outflank Donald Trump. But again, it comes at a massive cost of alienating moderates in the party that might actually see Donald Trump as the more moderate choice than Ron DeSantis. And I think this is all sort of leading to a massive disaster in 2024 for the Republican Party at all levels of the ballot, from the presidency on down to the Senate, House, and even local races. So at this point in time, according to opinion polling, on average, uh, Ron DeSantis is at 20% in 270, about 21% in RCP, 23% in 538, and that averages out to about 21.5%. So again, he's polling in the low 20s. That's far, far better than any of the other Republicans running in the primary, but it's still 30 points behind the frontrunner Donald Trump. Now, that's not insurmountable by any means, especially this early on, but the DeSantis campaign actually needs to have a massive overhaul 
in its campaign messaging in order to actually overtake Donald Trump or something has to happen to Donald Trump regarding investigations or other factors uh, that hinders his ability to actually campaign effectively in this race. But I think uh, you're starting to see a dynamic that I think played out in Pennsylvania in which you had Fetterman attacking Dr. Oz uh, really even before the primary was settled back in May of 2022, painting him as out of touch, elitist, uh, not a real Pennsylvanian. And these messages time and time again weren't effectively addressed by the Oz campaign, even as the Oz campaign started to uh, sort of resurge a little bit um, in the late summer and early fall of 2022. And ultimately, they were never able to make up the ground. That's kind of what we're seeing right now with the DeSantis campaign. There was a massive nosedive in the polls. And of course, it's mainly due to the fact that Trump has been able to effectively slander DeSantis among most Republicans and sort of make the case that he's the better Republican to go up against Joe Biden. Now, I think also part of it is the indictments. I think we're a huge boost uh, to Donald Trump because you have this rally around the flag effect. Many people see Donald Trump in the Republican Party as a victim of, uh, you know, democratic investigations or the deep state or whatever. And these sorts of notions are the reason why Donald Trump is polling so highly. Now, he's had a very slight decline, but he's still miles and miles ahead of Ron DeSantis. And if there isn't a massive course correction in the coming months, uh, he's going to win the Republican nomination fairly easily. Now, can Ron DeSantis win the nomination? Of course he can. There's still plenty of time uh, until Iowa. I mean, you've still got about five full months until January of 2024. Uh, there's still a lot that can change from now to then, especially given the fact that Donald Trump is going to continue to have indictments, but you could argue that this will only bolster uh, his prospects at getting the nomination because, again, the more Democrats go after Donald Trump, the more Republicans see him as a victim and, and the real fighter against the Democratic Party. So Democrats are really doing Donald Trump a massive favor and, of course, themselves a massive favor in 2024 by continually pursuing these indictments. Uh, because it strengthens Donald Trump in the primary and it significantly weakens him in the general election. And I think that's the real problem Republicans have in 2024. They have somebody leading the pack that cannot win a general election, or I should say whose chances of winning the general election are much smaller than they were in 2016. Again, if we go back to 2016, Donald Trump was running against the most unpopular nominee of a major party in American polling history. Hillary Clinton was massively disliked by Republicans, independents, and even Democrats. And you saw that with a lot of the third party vote share in crucial swing states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. Uh, you saw Democrat leaning voters and Democratic leaning independents voting for Gary Johnson and Jill Stein over Hillary Clinton. I mean, if you take a look at the percentages Donald Trump actually got in these states, 48.2, 47.3, 47.2, those are not majority margins by any means. The only reason Donald Trump was able to skate by in 2016 was because Hillary Clinton was more despised than he was. And this time around, I'm not convinced that Joe Biden is going to be in that position, despite the fact that Joe Biden is massively unpopular. We saw that in the midterm elections in the House, for instance. Uh, Democrats massively overperformed. Republicans massively underperformed expectations. Republicans only getting 222 seats uh, in a midterm environment where they should have gotten around 240 or so. And Democrats nearly retained control of the House, despite all indications that Republicans were going to win big on election night in 2022. Of course, the Senate as well, Democrats actually picked up a seat. And instead of there being a 50-50 tie, Democrats actually have a 51-49 majority in the U.S. Senate, uh, flipping the state of Pennsylvania, which we talked about a little bit earlier. So getting back to the primary, Ron DeSantis needs to do a number of things in order to win the Republican nomination. For one, he needs to be his own candidate. He needs to run on his own record. I think some of the tactics that he's utilized and some of the messaging he's utilized in this campaign uh, really sort of paint him as sort of this off-brand Donald Trump. And that's not something you want. If you're going to beat Donald Trump, for one, you actually have to have your own brand in Republican politics. And Ron DeSantis is still viewed very favorably by the Republican base. It's certainly not too late for him to overcome this massive deficit and win the Republican nomination. The vast, vast majority of Republicans view Ron DeSantis favorably. So that's something he has going for him. The problem is this primary process has really hurt him with the general electorate as of right now. 
even though he still polls better than Donald Trump. So again, even though Ron DeSantis is hurting in general election polls as compared to where he was a few months ago, he's still polling significantly better than Donald Trump in the key swing states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia. And, you know, those five states are really the make or break for the Republican Party. If they're going to beat Joe Biden, they need to win them. If, you know, for instance, if we go through the uh, scenarios here, if Republicans, for instance, win the states of Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, it's still not enough. They have to win Nevada, Arizona, Georgia. Let's say they win North Carolina. They still come up short if Democrats win Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. So if Republicans want to win, I think the easiest path to 270 is winning Arizona, Georgia, and probably Wisconsin. Uh, the other states, I think, are going to be a bit trickier. Again, Nevada is always that state that's close to Republicans but never ends up flipping. Michigan is going to be tough. And, of course, Pennsylvania is going to be pretty tough as well. Now, the problem with Arizona and Georgia with Trump as the nominee is that he's not going to win these states. Uh, back in 2016, Donald Trump won Arizona by three and a half points. He won Georgia by over five. In 2020, he lost both of those states by 0.3 and 0.2 respectively. Now, those are pretty close margins, but when you compare them to 2016, these were the states that trended the most to the left out of all of the other swing states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. These states trended the furthest left, and there's no indication that that's going to change in 2024. In fact, the polls have Donald Trump doing the worst against Joe Biden in these states when compared to the, the Rust Belt states, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Trump's actually doing better in the Rust Belt than he is in the Sun Belt. But the Sun Belt is going to be key to any Republican retaking the White House, whether it's Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. Again, if we run through the scenarios here, if Republicans win Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, but they fail to win Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, they still lose the White House. Of course, if they flip Michigan, they do win the White House. But that's going to be quite an uphill battle considering the fact that Michigan was a state that Biden won by three and you're going to have to make up a lot of ground in the suburbs that I don't think Donald Trump can actually make up. So, you know, with Ron DeSantis' slide in the primary, it's sort of a slide to Republicans' general election hopes in general. Again, I'm not saying Donald Trump is surefire going to lose this election. There's still some things he could potentially do campaign-wise. Uh, that could save him. But as of right now, I think it looks very grim for Republicans' hopes of winning 2024. Against Biden is massively unpopular in the general electorate, and yet Democrats have still done very well in these referendums, especially in the post-Roe environment. Again, they picked up a seat in the Senate. They didn't lose as many House seats as they were projected, and ultimately, they really held their own and then some. So if Republicans want to win 2024, their best bet is choosing a candidate that actually polls better than Biden and has shown time and time again that he can bring voters into the fold that normally don't vote Republican, college-educated voters, even postgraduate voters. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about Florida in the governor's election with Ron DeSantis. Again, his re-election, he won all of these groups. He won Osceola County, Miami-Dade County, Mar uh, Palm Beach County. These are all counties that are very, very blue counties. And these are counties that Ron DeSantis won because he expanded the GOP coalition, not shrunk it. And I think that's ultimately going to be what is his biggest strength in the general election if he's fortunate enough to make there. But as of right now, uh, he's certainly in a lot of trouble. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any more videos I put out. As always, again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.